welcome to Start Up With Poland, the program where we analyze the Polish startup ecosystem by talking to some key players. My name is Tessa Makiva and I'm your host. Now my guest today is Joanna pruszyńska witkowska Joanna is co-founder of Future Collars, a digital platform that empowers individuals to upskill and reskill for tech jobs. With over 20 years of experience in communications, Janna began her career as an ex executive at Leo Burnett and Havas agencies before founding her own PR agency, Headline Porters Novelli, which gained international and national recognition for PR campaigns. Now, in 2018, Janna launched Future Collars, which has since expanded into five markets. Jana's dedication to increasing diversity in technology, especially women's presence, is evident in Future Collar's various initiatives, such as Women in IT Career Day, Women Update, and the Scholarship Fund Diversity in IT. Jana has been named Forbes Poland's 100 Most Powerful Women and won the 2022 award Business Women of the Year by Success Pizzani Szminką. She's also been recognized as one of the most influential women by several Polish magazines. So I'm delighted to wel welcome Jana to start up with Poland. Jana, wonderful to have you with us here today. Thank you very much for inviting me to this startup event. Jana, I'm dying to know you ran <laughs> a successful PR business for over 20 years. And what made you decide to do a complete career switch and start a uh, startup? Well, I just said 20 years. I think that's a long it time. Is. And actually, I think I thought I'd achieved everything possible I was, I was able to do. I was doing corporate. I was doing, uh, you know, uh, cele celebrities. I was doing uh, beauty. I was doing everything. I was doing international. I was doing what celebrities like, you know, uh, Sharon Stone and Claudia Schiffer. And I just noticed that there's nothing else I can do. It's only be repetitive of the project. And I just felt, I don't think I don't want to have my coffin and people wanna gonna look at me at the cemetery PR you know, owner of the PR firm. I said there's something else. There's not then I think there must be much more things I can do in my life. And I thought this is time to move over, do something else. And uh, this the most important thing was that uh, a call, uh, I was participating in a conference where Mr. Yunus, I don't know if you know, is the Bangladesh uh, Nobel winner for uh, developing uh, uh, micro loans uh, for people from rural areas, especially uh -huh. for women. And he was talking about, in Poland, in the Warsaw University, uh, about the social business, social concept of a business, mm -hmm. which is basically, it's a business, it's mm -hmm. not philanthropy, mm -hmm. it's not NGO, it is a business that has one purpose, resolve a specific social issue. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is it. This is what I want to do. I want to do a business that has to be a socially responsible, also have a social issue to resolve, not only because to make money. And then I was, then I was questioned what to do. <laughs> and then, then another uh, kind of this gift came from a uh, universe. Uh, someone wrote to me on LinkedIn uh, that they're developing this online courses for uh, people who want to change jobs. Mm -hmm. And if I want to participate in this kind of uh, initiative in Poland, and he said, this is right. And I thought, this is what I want to do, especially for women. Because during my, uh, my projects in, for headlines for that, my company, I was also developing a, a platform called Women Experts. Uh -huh. It was a platform, for, it was my call, in a call to get more women into media, get more women in you know, boards and, and decision-making uh, areas. And I thought, well, uh, we don't see that. If you, if you can see it, you cannot be. So we have to promote more women into media. And when I was speaking to journalists, they say, well, why does the panels, there's no woman in the panels. I said, well, we don't know any woman we can invite. Oh, it, yeah. That was 2000, I think, uh, 10. I said, well, then I was, I think now I was naive. Uh, you can just do an, uh, this kind of special research search engine uh, website where we can have all this uh, women uh, available to be amazing experts in different fields. So I was organizing this uh, special network of women. And I was learning, to, uh, fast, I, was, I had opportunity to meet fast, uh, fascinating women who were in technology, in energy industry, every possible way, ways. 
but also was doing um, a report about women in finance sectors and women in technology. And what really appeared to me, and which is very known now, is the facts. And the facts are that in 2016, 85% of the employees in insurance banking industry are women. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was reading the reports that the biggest kind of automatization, robotization, and all the transformation, digital transformation is going to actually take place in the banking insurance sector. So obviously, there will be a lot of women who are going to leave the, the jobs because there will be no longer their positions going to be directly. And at the same time, I was reading about technology. And then it's totally reverse. 85% of women, 85% uh, of the employees are men. Only 15% are women. So I said, well, there's not be a huge transfer from one industry to other industry, and this, and we're not talking about teenagers who are at the schools. Yeah, we're talking about yeah. adult women who are 34 years old, and uh, they need to still to work for another three years, and need to be have you know, to put food on the table, <clears throat> and they have to have the jobs. So that that was my call. I want to get more women and actually taking care of people in this huge transition which is taking place, which means changing their careers, changing their jobs into technology jobs. So they can learn quickly, effectively, into a new, totally new position, new role in different IT, uh, uh, in, the, in, this, in the IT industry, in different roles. So this is, was my call, and that's why we started. I, I invited my friend uh, that time, who I also met from the uh, finance technology, uh, Bata Yarosh, who was at the time one of the uh, most important women in the finance because she was um, a board member of the Warsaw Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we started. We, you know, we are not in technology. <laughs> We're not in learning. I'm in communication. She's from the capital markets and finance. And, but we said we have a call. We know we wanna, what we want to do. And uh, let's start. So it's totally crazy. Uh, but we are successful. We are over, you know, I think at this, at this point, 5,000 alumni. 67% of our uh, alumni are women. Uh, we have a huge rate of success in almost 97% of people who start our course are finished. They go into uh, new positions or they actually accelerate in, uh, accelerate in their in their present ones because mm -hmm. they get to know you know very uh, hard skills which is involved you know from cybersecurity to programming to data science, all these things which is now uh, you know very looked after in the market. Well, no, I mean, you know, really inspiring and fascinating, <laughs> uh, you know, story of how Future Collars began. Thank you. Um, but, you know, I'm really interested in your opinion. Why do you think women do shy away from mm -hmm. the IT industry? Mm -hmm. you know? Well, it's very, you know, we kind of analyze it for many uh, years and then we see very, very clearly what happened. It's the stereotypes. Mm -hmm. For years, uh, and it's it's proven exactly at one moment mm -hmm. because I f if I don't know if you know, I, I mean the most and I recommend everyone uh, to really understand what was happening is to really try to get to this movie. It's the Hidden Numbers. I don't know if you know, uh, but it's no, no I haven't seen it's it. It's a marvelous book about um, it's a movie. Uh, even it was a cost and took place in it, uh, which was actually it's about invention of IBM computer, first computer okay. which was actually which is going to NASA. And you have these ladies, at, and we don't know about it, but you learn from this movie, that the, the computer people, mm -hmm. which were mathematicians, were first always were women. So the first computer mm -hmm. to, you know, to calculate things were tons of women who were working in the back office and they were producing. And what happened in this movie is one of the managers of this lady who was uh, coming from this group, she noticed that this computer is coming and this computer is going to replace all these ladies. And she said, but, but she was smart and said, well, how you program this computer? And I thought, I mean, no one knew how to gonna program the computer. So she went to the library, she went to get the first language, was Fortune language, and she told this, all these other ladies, say, guy, you're gonna lose the job. I just staying over after hours, and you learn with me, and mm -hmm. we're gonna be prepared to serve this uh, computer, otherwise we are lost. And that's what happened. They learned Fortran computer, and they moved to uh, to the people from IBM. And said, and guys, uh, how are you going to serve this uh, computer? We don't know. Well, we are ready to do it. So that they actually to perceive the changes in that happening, and the movie. So first of all, it's the stereotypes. Women were always mm -hmm. very good in mathematics, even in Poland at the moment. If you look at the mathematicians uh, in at university, forty percent are women, whereas in uh, information it's different. In 1970s, uh, when actually in, in late 60s, when computer science it can become a, I know, an academic mm -hmm. uh, pursuit, 
you have, uh, it is a great list and there's a book about women in tech. Uh, it said that was the same amount of women entering the computer science uh, degree as in for medicine or, <clears throat> or for uh, law. And then something sub happened in 1978 and suddenly totally no interest. And really speaking very reasonable, what happened? Right, PC entered the houses. Okay. And, and what happened, what it did, it was the parents did it. Because when the PC came to the, to the, to the houses, what they did, they put it to the boys' rooms. Yeah. Immediately it was said, it's a boy toy. And then and you think about it, all the computer games, the first computer games were always done for boys. Yeah. So women directly were, uh, girls were directly eliminated because uh, they directly parents and everything was kind of assumed this is a boy toy. And when the g woman, the girls, whatever, the young woman went to near, near university, it turned out to be that they were back behind in terms of knowledge and computers. Even Bill Gates said that when he was going entering the university, <clears throat> he already had 2,000 hours with computer. 2,000 hours, so he was, they were, he was much ahead of the other uh, women who had no access before to the computer. So yeah, they yeah, felt yeah. they're really uh, not kind of fit in. And then there's another thing, as a specific male, mm -hmm. as you know, in US, it was like you have a dog, which is very sporty, or you have this kind of nerd, which is, uh, <laughs> uh, which is not really socializing, was the person who was kind of a, a little bit outsiding, outside, closing themselves. And this, it was stereotypically, but also was, if these computers were given to his boys. So if you have this very socializing woman who actually wants to make an impact on the, on the world, she doesn't feel comfortable with these guys who are really, you know, uh, not really socializing, not really open-minded, and they're very, very focused on the, the things they do. So that was a very kind of yeah, clash. Yeah, yeah. So this is the, this image of the stereotypical programmer developed in the 70s. And, and I think it's changing a lot. I hope so. <laughs> it is, it is, it's changing. But still, you know, for many, many years, it was this, this assumption, if you are encoding because you are probably not really good in social life, uh, you are probably uh, uh, sitting in your, with your computer for 20 hours a day, this is, was the image. So it was very not appealing to women. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it was become, it's very masculine, it's very not really attractive for women, it's really not feminine. So all these things attached to this, uh, in this IT industry. Now it's changing, first of all, you don't have to be programming working 20 hours a day because there's lots of different positions and roles yeah, for yeah, women. Yeah, yeah. So this is changing, but that's how it's beginning. So we all, all women kind of develop the stereotypical image, which is what's really not appealing for women and young girls. I mean, we do talk more and more, you know, in society about uh, opportunities for women, you know, in, in a variety of sectors. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, there are great initiative, initiatives such as, you know, what, what you do with Future mm -hmm. Collars and a lot of the other mm -hmm. initiatives Many. and events that you do, you know, around this that really put women to the mm -hmm. forefront. But in real terms, do you think things are changing for yes. women? Yeah, they, they absolutely are. We notice, uh, you know, or every, even on small scale, because as you just said, there's many initiatives uh, happening, but on, not only initiatives for like this PR or CSR effect, because companies are really investing and mm -hmm. they really want to do, um, they want to access and, and invite more women to their uh, to the positions they're offering because they know it's right for the business. Because if you have more diverse uh, teamwork, team team, it's they 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 produce better, they cooperate better, uh, so it's better for the result. Then you have ESG, which also tells you about diversity. So company we were pushing. Of course, some people find it's not fair. I don't think it's fair because what can you do? Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so this, so this is a huge push uh, from in, into institutions like you know EU announcing like they want to do. Uh, they they in, inspire other companies and organization, and companies themselves. And I think um, also we just did a study which we're going to publish very uh, I think two weeks. We ask a, a representative of Polish population. If are they ready to reskill, and and thirty percent of the population we asked said yes, and same amount of women as men, and they said they okay. want to reskill to IT. So I think it's happening, and it's really uh, we see in numbers, we see in the interest, and it's uh, uh, especially that you know uh, you, you see women who are in IT who can talk about what they do, and they are uh, you know attractive women. They they have children, so it's like uh, they talk about this really interesting life work balance and. And also about this, there's, you know, people understand that there's so many different positions 
in IT, uh, in, in the programming, now in AI is opening yeah, so many yeah, different yeah, yeah. things. So it's a, it's, it's a, everyone can find with different talents their own uh, place, they want to, their own role, they want to continue. Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, about the stereotypes that you mentioned, because mm -hmm. indeed this, you know, sort of yeah. geeky guy yeah. sitting in his mother's basement, <laughs> you know, for 20 hours a day and coding and the computer. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, sort of innovation as on a sort of wider level mm -hmm. has actually helped make, you know, IT sexy, if we can right. call it that, because, you know, naturally now we see that, you know, IT is the driver behind innovation, behind startups, behind actually a very creative world, mm -hmm. which is far away from that, you know, of basement course. and the programming. Is that something you feel Ab and see? Absolutely. I think, you know, I was, as you mentioned, I was in PR, I was, and I started my career in advertising, and I was in this very hot, in 90s, when I came in Poland uh, from Canada, I was in this, I, I think the most exciting industry to be at that moment, I was in, in advertising. Yeah. You know, yeah, in great. the 90s advertising, it was, it's the creative industry. Now the creative industry is in technology, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, just, it was just funny, I just uh, have, a, have a son who started his own startup and is uh, in developing already his, has his funding and he's starting his uh, MVP. And he and he's from he's a guy from history. He's like totally history. And say, oh, mom, I'm now in um, at the WeWork, and we're going out, and we are with this creative creative industry. I said, wow, well, you're in creative industry. That's interesting because you know he was like in this uh, history, because the startup is now considering the creative industry. So it's no longer as before it was this advertising, the creative people, the copywriters, you know, the art directors, they're all these places. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now. It's all startups and technology. Yeah, no, it's certainly. There. <laughs> I, I meet so many young people who maybe, you know, 10, 20 years ago would have gone into a corporate job. That was, you know, the girl. Whereas mm -hmm. now they say, no, actually, I want to start a startup. It might Absolutely. be more risky, but, you know, no, no, no pain, no gain. Absolutely. I still agree. I have, uh, have three sons, and two sons have already finished their, their degrees. One already is successful. He left his job, corporate jobs, and, and he's now a full time devoted to his startup. And the second son, he's is in in the corporate job, but of course after hours he's already developing his startup, and his dream is to to have his own company and to be in a, with technology and startup. And they're looking a niche where there's a niche they can start and develop. So I think um, it's a lot of a changing that uh, I don't know exactly what went wrong with the corporate. Uh, is it because it seemed um, as it's kind of uh, because I find very. As I work with corporates, and I think they do amazing jobs and offer amazing benefits for people and security, uh, but for somehow um, for the young people, they're not longer attractive. Yeah, no, certainly. Have you certainly. noticed that too? Yeah, no. I mean, that's definitely the trend. Uh, you know, I see in the feedback I get that that you know the corporate job is definitely not not the dream anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe because it is too locked into a sort of you know set silo and doesn't the, the creative element seems in people's mm -hmm. minds again maybe it's a stereotype yeah maybe again another image will just still up <laughs> so we'll see but we i'm really interested you know in the statistics that you also mm -hmm. mentioned about uh the amount of the po population that wants to reskill upskill why is it that at a certain age you know people made this decision of okay i've been doing you know i mean you have did yourself that yes. you felt you were very successful you got to a point where you felt okay i couldn't can't do any more in this specific right. industry but, you know, not everyone is a flying success. You know, mm -hmm. maybe simply, do you think it's that there comes a point where they may be simply bored of what they've been doing or actually really want to challenge themselves at a certain age? What, mm -hmm. what? I think there's, there's many, many uh, specific things. And also we, um, we analyze it through our uh, alumni. And it was very interesting. What was, we ask why the men, when you find the main reason why men switch to do career change, because of the money. They want to make uh -huh. more money. Okay. okay. <laughs> And we ask why and decision why women want to change because they want to have effect bigger effect on their life. So it's about they want to develop. They want to be you know uh, it's not all about money. It's about their own development and having some impact on the life of things they do. So um, uh, so this is kind of uh, uh, interesting. So uh, but most of people we talk to basically is because they've been found in a situation. They, just, they have to do something about okay. it because either they lost a job because okay, okay. of the automatization changes mm -hmm, are happening mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm, companies mm -hmm. and it's going to be more and more. more I mean, more. I just came For back sure. from, I was just yesterday in, in Brussels attending this workshop, which was uh, um, organized by the European Union. They're looking for, uh, you know, the best kind of benchmark solution, best practice to apply reskilling 
elements and risking programs across the EU and they, and they analyze 39 countries from different programs. So because it's so much interest because there's there's going to be a huge amount of people. I mean, we said about 40% of jobs, they're going to just disappear. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, yeah. this has to be a way of quickly them transferred into different uh, roles. And um, so I think the most important factor is that when you are seeing that uh, your job is no longer uh, accelerating, doesn't give you any benefits, or it's basically you're not earning any more enough money, uh, you have to switch and yeah, you have yeah, to yeah, think yeah. of something else. So this is when people are really forced. Uh, we have a lot of we have a program of outplacement. So wow. the company laying off co uh, uh, employees, and they have this opportunity uh, with the package uh, to start courses with us to okay, to get another another job. And uh, in and we have you know people who were like 29 years working for this telecom in one position, <laughs> and now they have to go in the market. So it was very difficult for them, uh, and now they're very extremely happy and saying you know um, the, the other thing that everyone said. When they when they did it, I wish I did it earlier. You know that was always saying. I wish I did it two years ago. Two years ago, I would be much much uh, other space. But even it was it's this kind of um, stopping um, uh, our internal voice saying you're not good enough. You know the stereotypes. Uh, you are you are too old. Uh, you know you're not gonna have enough uh, power. You're not gonna have uh, any position. So this is kind of stops it. But this is the most internal barriers we have. Yeah, right? the sort of imposter syndrome the imposter that is actually system, in our head. That's yeah, the yeah, that's yeah. the biggest. <laughs> trend. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Well, you know, I think it's fantastic that you know you're offering actually the opportunity for so many people to to be able to upskill and reskill. Mm -hmm. But what are your plans for future callers, you know, for the next year, two years, and, you know, for yourself as well? Okay, well, we are expanding. We are okay. already, already uh, in, uh, in Ireland, in Czech Republic, Slovakia, Emirates. Wow. And okay. we are pursuing also Saudi Arabia. I know some people are not ha happy with the Saudi Arabia country. Uh, well, we see as a, as a country we would make huge uh, plans to reskill a big part of this population. They're a very young population. They're like... I think 60% of the populations are under 30. So it's like okay. comparing to what we have in Europe. Uh, so we are uh, pursuing that. So we regionally and we are going to France and Germany. Uh, and we want to be, you know, uh, big partners to uh, corporate co companies who have uh, access to, uh, to amazing people, the talents in their present uh, pool. And uh, they know there's that the democracy, the, uh, the demo demography, is that you know there's uh, not many young people are coming, so you really have to work with the team you have, and we would like to be you know to partner with them to uh, you know to retrain, reskill people to the position they are they needed, uh, instead of just you know laying off them, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. because I think it's much more like the circle economy concept that you know we just yeah, 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 we yeah. work with the people yeah. here, especially that these people are not the organization, they're happy, they don't want to leave, you know, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. I think so it's a win-win. So we uh, we like to be uh, a real partner uh, to to. To the big companies who are doing that, and also the individuals, uh, we helping. We develop also to, to mapping the talents, and uh, so we developing uh, to you know uh, working constantly to developing better tools to you know keep people in the uh, in the study to mm -hmm. keep their motivation mm -hmm. to help them to develop them. So we would like that this uh, this period with us about three to four months is going to be a big transformation. Okay, so this is something we're also investing in. And at the same time, is the, the methods and, and the products. So we are now uh, starting with new courses in AI. Uh, we are first developing cybersecurity, which is a huge thing, which is happening. I don't know if you know, the N NH uh, is going to be new um, uh, directive from the European Union. And every okay, product okay. which has VFI is going to be, you know, needs to have certifications for cybersecurity, which is going to, again, um, and uh, increase the demand of specialists. So this is our plans. Okay, so so a lot of ambitious plans ahead. <laughs> um, I'm really looking forward to observing and you know seeing as things develop. And you know I think it's really as I already said, you know great work that you're doing, really great. Thank you're giving you. so many opportunities to so many people on on the marketplace. And and you know I I really hope that Future Colors go continues to go from strength to strength and in more and more geographies as well. Thank you very much. Thank you so, for inviting Diana, me. Thank you so thank much you, for Tessa. joining us today. And thank you to our listeners. And join us next time for Start Up With Poland.